City Clerk. Council Member, Agency Director, Authority Member Chris. Present. Mann. Present. Marcus. Here. Vice Mayor, Vice Chairman Smith. Here. Mayor Chairman Paris. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Tonight we have Associate Pastor Tim Christensen from uh, Lancaster Baptist Church doing the communication. Hey, well, let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and faithfulness. Your word says in Lamentations 3 that your compassions do not fail and that your mercies are new each morning. And we praise you for this and we thank you that it is the reality in our city and in our lives individually. We pray that you would give wisdom and guidance for this meeting. We thank you for this council and for the staff uh, here at our city. We pray that you would guide them. And we pray that you would use us together as citizens, as churches, as members of this community to improve the quality of life uh, for our residents. We thank you so much for the grace and faithfulness and accomplishments in recent months and years. And we pray that you would continue to give grace, meet needs, uh, help us to uh, reach out to those in our city who need to sense the love of their neighbor and your love, and help us to do this together. And we pray that you would guide through the days ahead. We think of our country. We pray that you would protect our servicemen and women, especially those that are serving in Afghanistan, Iraq, other parts of the Middle East, and now in Libya. We pray that you give our national leaders wisdom as well in these things and protect those who are serving us overseas. Again, we pray your blessing of wisdom and guidance upon what takes place in this meeting. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Marcus, you want to? Place your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, tonight we have two awards, one for the Athlete of the Month and the other for the Sore Student of the Month. Let's start with the Sore Student of the Month, Erica Givens. Is she here? How are you? It's nice to see you. You know, SOAR, for those of you who don't know, is the, the jewel of the Antelope Valley. It, it really is one of the best high schools in the world today. It is. It is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and that's, not an that's not an overstatement at all. It, it really is. These kids will graduate with anywhere from a year to two years of college. Every single one of them will be admitted to college. Most of them, the vast majority of them, will graduate from college. It, it is, it's an incredible accomplishment. It is. Yeah. And they, they interview to go there. They, 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 the biggest requirement is just your engagement. Isn't, mm -hmm. isn't that just correct? Just your involvement and yeah. your grades and your goals and your academics. And, and they got to fight to stay there. Yeah, I mean, you really do. Yeah, listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> and she is the, the one they chose this month to be the source student of the month. Erica has a... 3.5 GPA. She received an election worker award. Her activities are serves the homeless dinners, hospital student volunteer, Kaiser student volunteer, job shadowing at Health Careers Academy volunteer. I guess you're going to be a doctor. Um, the medical examiner. A oh, CSI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
That's wonderful. Uh, she's majoring in biology and pre-med, uh, and she wants to be a medical examiner. Erica grew up in a low-income, single-parent household with three siblings and will be the first-generation college student. You know, one of the things we saw when we were doing the mock trial programs at the high school is because we were able to track them now 15 years later. The kids that, that were able to succeed had two parents. The ones who didn't were either single family or no parent. It, it, what we saw was that it's just such an incredible advantage to have two parents. And to do this with a single parent home yeah. is, you must have a great mom. I do. She's right there. <laughs> hey, stand up. <laughs> Her most important activities have been homeless outreach and hospital volunteering. In both of these activities, she can use her time helping people and doing kind and selfless acts. Serving other people gives her immense enjoyment. Erica has worked hard to do well in school and biology, and has been her most, which has been her most significant class because she plans to major in biology and wants a career in the medical field. She has also been dedicated to biology because she really enjoys the materials and just about everything about natural science. Thank you. Thank you. Now, part of this is you get this really cool certificate. Mm -hmm. And when you apply to Stanford, Yale, and Harvard, you, you get a letter from the mayor, and you get $1,000. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, you want another picture? Come on down. Come on, Mom. And we'll give you about three minutes to give a speech. And no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. The athlete of the month is Allison. How do I say that? Loads? Come on down. Is that your parents with you? No, my dad. Do you, you want to come down? <laughs> no. No? Okay. Allison is a two sports star at Lancaster High School, was named Golden Lake Soccer. Come on over. Because you've got to give a speech. MVP for both her junior and senior seasons. You're wondering if you do, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Allison played center midfield and scored 19 goals and added 17 assists the past two seasons while being named the second team all CIF. Allison is also named Libero. Libero of the year. What is that? Um, you're just a deep, a completely defensive player. Oh, okay. So, you know, too short to play for a row. In, in volleyball by the AB Press while leading Lancaster to share of the Golden Lake to a share of the Golden Lake title. Allison's leadership skills showed as she was elected captain of both the school volleyball team and the soccer teams, as well as her club soccer team. You know, I had a son who played club soccer. The commitment these kids have is incredible. I mean, it's hours and hours every week. It's just phenomenal. And somehow, listen to this, a 4.6. How do you even get a 4.6? <laughs> AP classes. <laughs> wow. A 4.6 GPA and has been on the principal's honor roll for four years. Allison will pursue a degree in biology or kinesiology with a goal of medical school. Allison volunteers at Grace Resources through the National Honor Society and the Desert Tur Tortoise Preserve. And you also get $1,000 on your way to Harvard State for Okay. <laughs> Pickling for the. Kelvin's going to do it. Okay. <laughs> We're trying to train you not to be afraid to talk to people. Now come. <laughs> now, this is an opportunity. Okay. Okay, 
Tonight we're going to be recognizing the American Red Cross, and I wanted to ask the uh, executive director for the Antelope Valley chapter of American Red Cross, Jeff, Jeff Baumgartner, to join me up here. For those of you who don't know, March happens to be uh, American Red Cross Month, and uh, we're fortunate up here in the Antelope Valley to have uh, our, actually our own chapter of the American Red Cross up here. Uh, to serve um, our residents in the valley. Um, a couple of notes here that uh, some folks may or may or may not be aware of. The American Red Cross is an independent volunteer-led organization that plays an integral role in communication communities across the nation. The Antelope Valley chapter was chartered uh, on April 7, 1943, nearly 70 years ago, right here in the Antelope Valley. The Antelope Valley chapter serves 40% of Los Angeles County and 50% of Kern County. That's a 4,300 square mile area. So, you know, this is one of the largest chapters serving a very uh, expanded area. The Antelope Valley chapter hosts 18 cities. Uh, Lancaster is one of the largest ones in the area. And approximately 120 new volunteers in the last 12 months have signed up with the, uh, the chapter. And since July 1, 2010, the Red Cross Disaster Response Team of Antelope Valley has responded to 21 local incidents and assisted 22 families, consisting of approximately, approximately 92 people. That means that this chapter has actually served in less than a year um, 92, people, 92 people here in the valley. Uh, we are grateful for the tireless work of their volunteers and staff. And during the month of March, we pay special tribute to this remarkable organization and its volunteers who have so diligently answered the humanitarian call to provide emergency relief and needed care worldwide to those suffering in the face of disaster. And on behalf of the City Council and the Mayor of Lancaster, I want to provide to you, Jeff, the, a proclamation from the City of Lancaster. Thank you so much, Calvin. Uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, thank you, Mayor Harris. And, uh, wait a Before you say anything, we, we also have the county that wants to have something. Is that right? So let's do that, and then we, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, on behalf of uh, Supervisor Antonovich, it is a pleasure, Jeff. And you may not know, Jeff has only been here for six months now. And uh, he went through the most grueling hiring process anybody's ever gone through. But as soon as he picked up a golf club, I knew he was a good guy. So that was my vote. He had it right from the beginning. But on behalf of Supervisor Antonovich, just thank you. Thank you to all the volunteers and to all you do for the San Antonio Valley. Uh, you know, in a time of need, you guys are there. So God bless you. I'd just like to take this opportunity to briefly thank the City of Lancaster and uh, Norm from the County of L.A. for this uh, fantastic recognition. Uh, the Red Cross has been making some excellent progress, and, uh, you know, we are here to serve the people. We're a humanitarian organization, and that's our focus, and uh, we're going to continue to grow and, and do that. Um, one uh, quick plug, if I may, uh, the Antelope Valley Red Cross is going to be hosting a drive-through donation event to support Japan Relief this Saturday, uh, March 26th, at Clear Channel Stadium. Uh, that will be from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. So come on down if you'd like to make a donation to the local chapter or to the Japan Re Relief effort. Uh, we'll be down there in force and also providing preparedness uh, information and education as you drive through. So uh, real quick and easy, uh, you can learn a little bit about the Red Cross and uh, help out. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Calvin. Thank you. Calvin, that wasn't so hard, see? All speaker cards must be filled out and submitted prior to the agenda item being called. The same rule applies if you wish to speak on non-agendized items at the end of the meeting. Following this process will allow us to conduct a timely and orderly meeting. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Marvin. And Marvin will be presenting a award to Walmarts for their contribution to the community. Council Member Christ. Can I have Greg French and Roy Combs up here, please? <clears throat> These two gentlemen are the managers of the West Side Walmart and the East Side Walmart, and the City of Lancaster would like to recognize them for what they do for the community. 
what they do for the community is when the station fire um, took place, uh, the fire department made a couple phone calls. These gentlemen donated all the water, not the, to put the fire out, but for the firemen to drink. They give them a lip gloss, um, pallets of water from what I understand. Uh, recently, uh, the sheriff station asked for some snow chains because they changed the tire sizes on there and both Walmarts, but they do other things, Boys and Girls Club, Rotary, they do it uh, thunder on the lot. So the city of Lancaster would like to thank Roy Combs and Greg French for their community and law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. City Manager, anything to be removed from the agency consent calendar? No, sir. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I'd like to, uh, some matters have arisen since we posted the agenda, and I'd like to make a motion that we add a urgency closed session item uh, for conference on government code section 54956.9 sub A on the Mongol Nation Motorcycle Club versus the city of Lancaster. I'll second that. Let's vote. It's unanimous. Sure you don't want to do it in public session? <laughs> Chicken. We'll start Cowards. Cowards all around. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, do I have a motion on the consent calendar? Uh, we'll move to adopt the agency consent calendar as currently comprised. I need to uh, recuse myself on RCC2. I have a property nearby. Okay. Let's, yeah. uh, let's do the first two, and then you can recuse yourself on that. Yeah, I'll withdraw that motion. I'll move that we adopt the agency calendar RCC1 and RCC3. Uh, three. 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 Sorry, Mr. Mayor. You want to do? Let's do right. those first. one and three. Yeah. And uh, that we uh, uh, adopt RCC1 and RCC3. I'll second that. Let's vote. It's unanimous. Okay. Councilman Christ has left the room. Is there a motion on RCC2? So moved that we adopt RCC2. I'll second. Let's vote. It's unanimous with Marvin Christ recusing himself. Mr. Christ has returned. Is there a motion on the minutes? So moved. Second. Let's vote. The minutes are approved. Anything on the consent calendar to be removed? No, sir. Is there a motion on the consent calendar? Move that we adopt the consent calendar for the city. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. A second. Let's vote. It's unanimous. New business. Are there any speaker cards on NB1? Uh, we'll now hear the staff report regarding NB1 from Economic Development Director Vern Lawson. This is not a public hearing. Mayor and Council, it's my pleasure tonight to present the Commercial Property Improvement Program to you. Uh, several months ago, you approved the Positioning for Prosperity strategy, and it included a couple of components. Uh, number one, to enhance the Boulevard Improvement Program that, of course, we're very familiar with, but we want to keep that drive alive. And then additionally, we want to help local merchants to thrive. So we have a couple of programs here that we think will do both that. The first program is um, targeted at the downtown, primarily businesses that front Lancaster Boulevard. 
We also have established a core block. I'm sure everybody is familiar with that is the block that we've uh, done the 26-foot wide sidewalk on. Um, this, we hope, is the first phase of this program, and in later phases we'll be able to do other things, but we were thinking it made sense to focus the money a little bit to get you know, maximum bang for our buck. This uh, will primarily be to uh, improve facades, and as you can see with this picture, I think we're all impressed with what Scott was able to do with uh, the facade improvements in the background that, um, you know. Oh, the background. I the see. background, okay. yes. I, <laughs> Um, it, <laughs> he put it up there. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to make the point that, uh, you know, with some awnings and a little paint and a little brick, um, you know, we can aesthetically uh, substantially improve what we have there. Um, the program will be on a matching basis. We're trying to extend the money as far as we can. The maximum um, grant will be $40,000, which would match with the $40,000 grant. Obviously, it will get us $80,000 worth of improvements. Uh, we also found out today that there may be an opportunity to partner with the Public Works Department. Uh, they have a uh, potential grant program for some of the uh, wastewater disposal that uh, some of these areas, which will be restaurants, could be you know, a substantial saving. The second component is a um, limited to redevelopment project areas throughout the city. But uh, to focus this a little bit, uh, we will give priority to this commercial corridor. One of the things that we found when the CBRE people, the uh, real estate folks that are doing our evaluation of uh, uh, private sector properties in the city, is they, they don't believe that the entrances to Lancaster are as attractive as they could be. So towards that end, they're recommending that we sit down and we look at some of the entrances, look at some of the main intersections. As you can see, this is a draft map that ultimately the council will get to approve. This is a work in progress. But when you get off the freeway at Avenue L or when you get the, off the freeway at Avenue K, uh, the busiest intersection in the town is 10th Street West and Avenue K. And we want to make sure that we maximize the retail potential. So this program is designed to uh, primarily uh, do paint, facade, and signs. This is an example of some of the signs that the planning department thought made some sense. And um, you know, this is a, a small step uh, with the limited budgets that we have. Um, you know, I wish it could be more. But I think it's the kind of thing that uh, you know, will be exactly the direction we want to head in. The money that's allocated is actually bond funding, so these will be all grants. But again, it is limited. Uh, in the existing program, we will have about 11 deals that we can do in the downtown and 33 deals that we can do in the corridor areas. I would be happy to um, answer any questions, uh, but the real uh, staff work behind this was actually accomplished by Shannon Dow. So if you have specific questions, we'll want to make sure we get her up here because she really understands the ins and outs. The plan is that if you approve it tonight, we'll start it tomorrow morning. We'll run it until the money runs out or the end of the year, whichever comes first. Well, one question. Maybe you could go over what the, um, what the protocol is and what we've set in place so that we're protected of how people apply and what, you know, a little bit more detail on that. Um, the protocol is that uh, you can contact our, our department at uh, 723-6128 and we'll, we'll create an interest list. We're actually going to have a loan uh, committee comprised for the downtown. We're going to use some of the bankers in downtown and go through. We want to have uh, business plans. Uh, it's, it's primarily for new businesses that will enhance the um, economic restructuring of the downtown. We want to make sure that uh, these businesses um, expand our tax base, and again, because we have a limited amount of funds, we want to be very, very specific. As far as the uh, more broad program, uh, you know, there's less uh, restrictions. Again, that's more of a, a, a facade improvement. We're trying to uh, uh, fix the, the look of those areas. Um, and we want to focus on entrepreneurially owned businesses. You know, we're not here. This is not designed primarily to, you know, handle chains that uh, probably could afford to do it themselves anyway. They have to maintain so, the design standards at the Planning Commission and the Council. Absolutely. The design part. guidelines that, um, you know, that the Council's uh, approved, uh, this is the perfect opportunity to, to make this happen. Uh, I think there was quite a bit of collaboration that occurred with the staff. And one of the things that we talked about is we want to be careful about focusing this because, you know, if you didn't do that, you could literally go out and spend this money all over town and not really see much of an impact right. as big as our community is. But by focusing in on these areas, we think that uh, aesthetically it will improve a great deal. Like we said, this is just the first step. Good idea. Great. Yeah. Uh, Mr. McEwen, 
do I have a conflict? I have the McMahon's building and I have the uh, J and 10th. It's a citywide program. I, um, I think, you know, maybe out of an abundance of caution, it wouldn't hurt to have you disqualify yourself for this this okay. approval process. Then we'll review it in more detail at a subsequent date. Okay, I'm going to yield to the vice mayor and I'll leave the room. Thank you. I have a question too, because I have property, two properties, on the, uh, from 15th Street to 10th Street. Properties in the in the district. Yeah, I lease a space at 15th West, <laughs> but I don't own the property, and I would only think the conflict would take place in my eyes is if I tried to apply for the. And you know, as of since I've been a city councilman, well, I sir, just need to do business. Mr. McHugh, I think this is something we need to go into a little more depth. Okay. Um, and I, I think there are there are a lot of potential benefits from approving the the. Um, program even if you don't necessarily participate in it um, I think uh, mr. Chris do you have commercial building well the same same concept and I think if uh, we we now would have three three members who have disqualified themselves we need to apply the rule of necessity that's what I was going to ask and uh, make an arbor select using some arbitrary method we can draw straws um, pick numbers out of a hat well why don't we pick the person who's leasing rather than the person that owning because this money no that you, you, building to apply the rule of necessity yeah, you do. can't do it that right. way you've got to do it on a completely arbitrary method cage uh, fight yeah that works <laughs> okay, so, so <laughs> long as it's not against sherry so between the uh, I just okay. want you to know I own nothing on the bullet <laughs> 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 Okay, so so let the record reflect right now that Mr. McEwen is going to be uh, making a random lottery here, and uh, who I want to pick a number now? between one and ten. Or? Oh, here we go. And okay, I wrote I wrote three numbers. I wrote a number on each of these pieces of paper. I crossed out two of them because we don't really care about the two. The one that gets number one in there that it has not been crossed out is the one that gets to uh, participate. You want to hang? Gosh, no. <laughs> special. <laughs> Watch, this will be the one lottery I win. <laughs> No batting a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets it? I got the one. Okay, so record reflect that uh, that Councilman Chris and uh, Mayor Paris have left the room, and because of uh, the rule of necessity, uh, that we have uh, three members remaining, and so um, we'll continue the hearing at this time with that as the record. Any any further questions for staff? This is not a public hearing, so we're not going to close it. But any other questions for? We should have Shannon up here and ask her one question, put her on the hot yeah, seat. Yeah, let's put her on the hot no, seat. No, that's okay. No. So. Okay, uh, one speaker card, uh, Michael Reeves. Just let me remind you, you have three minutes, and we'll give you the yellow Hi. light when you got 30 seconds. Can you hear me okay? Uh, I don't know if I should disqualify myself because I'm a property owner on J9 and 10th Street West. But well, I'll you're go not ahead. voting, so. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and speak. First of all, before I begin, I want to uh, commend our city government. Um, I'm really impressed by the work they do. Uh, you guys are one step ahead of me at all times. Uh, for example, I was over at 20th Street and K today, and I saw the, the dirt from the uh, rain on the street, and I said, somebody ought to clean that up. And before I could come back on the same street, it was being cleaned up. Good job. I appreciate all, appreciate all the work you're doing. You earn your money, Mark. Um, I favor the uh, redevelopment of downtown. I publicly said it in, uh, on television and the newspaper, and I, I'll say it again. I think it's a great thing, and I think it's just a beautiful concept that we were shown tonight, uh, a Rodeo Drive concept. But what I'm concerned about and what I would like to see done, how is this going to look 100 years from now? My vision for the Antelope Valley is one metropolitan area. One city, the Antelope Valley, this 
building here at the City Hall, Lancaster, the City Hall for the City of the Antelope Valley. A hundred years from now, if my concept became reality, we would have a million people. How is this going to fit in with uh, my concept? First of all, to have a city hall, you need a downtown, and we will have one. But are these facades going to hold up for 100 years? Uh, they will hold up for 50. They will bring business to us now. But what will be the result? My concept is like Seattle, uh, Vancouver, Canada. They're, they're beautiful cities. They're by uh, mountains, uh, they're by the ocean, and that's the concept I have for this city. And I hope that whatever you decide, that we think about what downtown is going to look like 100 years from now in my concept uh, as a city of Antelope Valley. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else, any discussion? I'll entertain any motions. Um, I'll move that we accept the recommendation on the commercial property improvement program. And authorize the city manager as his designee to execute all grant documents? Correct, okay. as so stated. Thank you. Okay, great. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Call for a vote. It's unanimous with uh, Marvin Chris and, uh, and uh, Mr. Paris out of the room. Let the record reflect that Councilman Chris and uh, Mayor Paris have re-entered the room, and I'm turning the chair back over to Mayor Paris. Thank you. City Manager, any announcements? Um, three quick ones. I want to uh, thank our staff for the work they did over the last 48 hours with the storm and cleanup, and the community for also uh, being very well prepared, a lot of the neighborhoods. Uh, second thing, we had the pleasure of opening the first phase of American Heroes Park today, which turned out to be a very nice event. And third, I'd, uh, Mayor Paris, I know you'd like to recognize at least that our new captain is here in the audience today. Bob Johnson, if you want to stand up. We, we are incredibly fortunate to have this man as our captain. Uh, this is, uh, we're, we're going to have a new dawn. Thank you. No pun intended. I didn't get it. A new dawn? <laughs> but somebody please take Councilman Christ out and horse whip him. <laughs> All right. City clerk, see if we can do better. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is time the time for public business from the floor on non-agendized items. You'll find speaker cards at the back of the council chambers. We respectfully request that you fill the cards out completely and print as clearly as possible so that if necessary, the city council, the city manager, and staff will be able to get in touch with you if necessary. As much as we appreciate your request to make comments before your three minutes begin, please understand your time begins when you start to speak. Individual speakers are limited to three minutes each. When you approach the podium, you'll see three lights. The green light comes on when your time begins. The yellow light comes on when you have 30 seconds remaining. And the red light comes on when your time is up. We ask that you be considerate of the allotted time to allow other speakers to have their three minutes as well. Following this procedure will allow for a smooth and timely process of the meeting. State law does prohibit the City Council from taking action on items not on the agenda, and your matter will be referred to the City Manager. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Darlene Peterson. I'm the only one to use that. I don't want it to get rusty, so I'll use it. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would play the piano in Carnegie Hall, much less Lancaster City Hall. When I dis discovered the piano in the lobby, I decided to give it a try. I didn't ask for a request because of my past experiences. Most people wanted to know if I could play far away, cruising down the river, or on a slow boat to China. I played by ear, and my hearing must have gone bad because Deputy Sheriff Mike Cooper appeared on the scene. 
He did, however, just go merrily on his way. No doubt he went to look for earplugs. Sadly, the piano is now gone. If you ever place pianos on the boulevard, maybe I'll drop by and play some chanted evening by the light of the silvery moon. Better still, you should place a piano in the Lancaster City Hall lobby. I may stop by and play again. My program will be Happy Days Are Here Again, Let Me Entertain You, and Who's Sorry Now? <laughs> As for placing pianos around the boulevard, Martha Stewart might say, it's a good thing, and I think so too. Thanks for the memories. Thank you, darling. Where are the pianos on the them. boulevard? I'm going to... The pianos were taken over to a shop to be uh, fitted for the box that goes over the top to protect them. That was completed on Thursday of last week. We would have installed them Monday, except for the rain that happened over the weekend. That kind of slowed us down. Our crew was working on buildings. They'll go in probably the beginning of next week. And we have three of the boxes done, three pianos ready to go. And the boxes will protect them, I think, for their entire life that they're out there, which should be a long time. Great. Thank you. Darlene, happy days are here again. <laughs> Marla Gutierrez. Okay, Lancaster City Council to please consider the following. The old fairgrounds to be a future flea market. Land could be made, uh, forgive me, land could make money uh, for the city. Sorry about that. Even if for future construction land has started construction, monies could be made from space rental. Monies could be made from parking. Monies could be made from admission. Farmer's market a possibility. Unemployed people may invest into spaces and sell goods. People who visit Mexico may make a profit on goods. Teens may have a safe atmosphere on weekends. Old wiring may be repaired for food vendors. Spaces may be may rent uh, for nonprofit organizations. Schools or job fair information will be passed out. Uh, please bring the atmosphere of the old fair back into our homes. I mean, I've lived here for a very long time. My father made the restaurant uh, Nico's Mexican Food on Sierra Highway, and um, it's just. Save some, of the, save some of that old country, please. <laughs> no, no, I grew up watching the fairgrounds. I grew up uh, crazy autos in the, in, you know, right there on the railroad track. I mean, uh, no, don't take it all. <laughs> don't take it all. Leave some of that. L leave that, you know. Maybe, the, um, maybe it wasn't meant to be, a, you know, for houses. And even if it does turn into houses later, you've already started the pavement. And you know what I'm saying. You could do the painting later. And people could make money. So you know what I'm saying. Um, you know how the farmer's market, they either do the fudge or whatever, you know, on Ben's Corner they used to do. And, I mean, just so some people could do something during the, you know, and when young girls do stuff like that, it makes them feel good to do that and get involved. You know, it's something I'd like to bring to your attention. Thank you very much. I'll look into it. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. And let's discuss that next week. Okay. Thanks. Cesar Almeras. How are you? Hi. Good evening, Mayor, Good evening. Council Members, City Government, and Citizens of Lancaster. Um, the reason I'm here this evening is my dad asked me to stop by once in a while and come to the city meetings and attend, take an interest in your community, take an interest in your city. So that's why I'm here. So I just I stop and I'll make little observations and make positive comment that encourages everyone. I'll try to do it that way. This evening I noticed when I came to the city, a friend of mine, Mike, mentioned that there's a little time capsule up by your flagpole out there. It's something that was supposed to be opened in 2010. So I want to remind you that, hey, it's, it hasn't been open. We're in 2011 now. And uh, there it is. It's still out there. And uh, I've taken interest in it because it's part of our heritage and uh, our, our city history here in Lancaster. <coughs> also, uh, let's see. That's a good idea. And we, yeah. and we could do it. At, we could start city. another one for the American Heroes Park. We could do them together. What I like about... Uh, also, what I like about the way things are being run here is your transparency. When you say you're going to have a meeting and we're going to have a private meeting, personally, you can take as much time as you want. You can be back there a year. But, but, but you, the fact is that you tell us, and then you don't come out here late and say, well, this, that, that. You let us know and you keep us informed, and that's part of it. And I appreciate that, Mayor and Councilman. Uh, 
your transparency. Also, sponsorship during events. Your signs, I, I, you know, no disrespect to the signs, but if we can get those a little lower, it would make it more spectator friendly. If I didn't have to struggle to see over the signs to see the go-kart when we have the go-kart event every year. There were, especially here in, in the area of Sierra Highway and Lancaster Boulevard. If we could clear those areas a little bit right in those spots, lower the, the signs a little so we could see the cars better, that would be wonderful. Somebody writing that down? That's a good idea. Uh, <clears throat> Also, let you know where I came from. I, I used to rent a little house where uh, the fire station is at one time. I used to rent from George Lane. I started out as a busboy at the desert and worked different jobs there to make my way until I finally got a job at Edwards Air Force Base. But I, I did everything. I did painting. I worked at Buckner and Wilson. I worked uh, at uh, Tip Top Tree Service and things like that until I made my way. As, as I've been here like 19, 20 years in this, in this city. Let you know who I am. So I let you know as I, I come as a friend and, and, uh, and a good citizen. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. Barbara Maisel. Before we start, I was at the meeting at the town hall with uh, the Board of Supervisors over. Had a nice talk with them. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I know you've been busy. But first, I want you to go back to your Hispanic Chamber of Commerce next time you see them. Tell them I'm boycotting all their businesses because they're not an equal opportunity employer. And that means Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez, who have ten wonderful fast food places, and Jerry's, and the Delicatessen, Brooklyn. You hire one, you hire all. But if you're going to have only Latinos, I boycott. Now, the guy who has the uh, AMPM on 10th and Lancaster Boulevard, he's got all Latinos, and he cheated me out of my scratcher, and I told him what I thought of him. Okay. Now, as far as you, word to the wise. The Fair Housing Amendment Act of 1988, uh, Title Eight of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, which prohibited housing discrimination based upon race, color, religion, national origin, or sex. But the new enforcement provision of the law allowed HUD to refer complaints of discrimination as, a, as substantiated by a thorough investigation to an administrative law judge, ALJ, if informal attempts to conciliation have failed. The ALJ can impose actual damages, injunctive relief, and civil penalties of up to $10,000 for a first offense, up to $50,000 for multiple offenses. A compliance or respondent may alternatively demand referral to a U.S. District Court in lieu of ALJ, with the government represented by the Department of Justice lawyers. You are treading on dangerous waters as a friend. I advise you to read Federal Reg uh, Register, Volume 54, Number 13. I advise you to start reading some of the federal laws. They got you, guy. They got you. As a friend, I'm advising you. But as a recipient of Section 8, the villainy you teach me, I will execute. And though I'd go hard, I will better the injustice. And I have a question. Do you have a list, and I expect you to be honest, of all Section 8 people that reside in Lancaster to in your benefit for you or the Sheriff's Department at this time? I'm not aware of such a list. Thank you. Uh, Julie Foster, how are you? Good evening. Mayor and City Council. I want to say thank you, Mr. Paris and Council. Out of all the times that I've been to talk to you, I feel like last week was probably the first time that I felt heard, like completely heard, and I want to say thank you for that. Um, I want to say that the busts that happened this week um, were merely coincidental timing, as I know that the code enforcement had already been working on them uh, with the massage establishments before I had spoken two weeks ago, and I commend them for their efforts. I know it's not easy. Um, 
However, I do feel that uh, the effects of these busts are indeed temporary. Unfortunately, the owners will sell out tomorrow to another unscrupulous business partner, and the problem will continue to persist under another management. Um, as a working mother of four children, I most often look for an efficient way to do my daily duties to save time, money, and effort. In case of the ordinance was regulating massage establishments, I can imagine that you too would like to find a way to save time, money, and resources, and labor. Um, the way to save that time and effort, resources, and labor, and our taxpaying dollars is to strongly encourage all massage establishments to hire only CAMTC workers. I spoke last week to Jocelyn Corbett, the writer of the new ordinance, and she has assured me of a few things. Um, the first is, is that she is unwilling to require all massage therapists to be CAMTC certified. I don't understand her decision. Um, she wants to leave it up to the individual to decide to be CAMTC certified or to pay for a license through the city. I don't understand it and I respectfully do not agree with it because requiring everyone to be CAMTC certified almost permanently fixes the problem that I discussed with you two weeks ago. Um, I spoke to Jocelyn while I was on my way to a CAMTC meeting down in Los Angeles and I spoke to the CEO and the Division Director of Professional Standards Division and I learned so much about how they are absolutely the way to f permanently fix this problem. I'm offering you this fact sheet and the um, cards for the CEO, Amos Nantanal, and the um, Richard McElroy, and they have offered to come here and talk to you and to tell you and to talk about the way they go through their investigation process, to show you how thorough it is, to talk with your uh, local law enforcement officers. They're willing to sit down and try to help everybody understand why this is truly a way to fix this problem. Um, the second thing that she, her and I discussed was that the new ordinance requires all CAMTC therapists to register in the, register in the city. She has assured me that Ms., uh, Mr. Paris said there will not be a charge. And I personally have no problem with that ordinance then if there isn't another charge to me. Even though it is one extra step, I'm willingly saying I will agree, I'll agree to that if it just means regulation. Um, in closing, I ask you, Mr. Paris, to please give these gentlemen a call. They are willing to talk with you and they want to help the communities and their law enforcement efforts to permanently fix the problem and be more of a proactive rather than a reactive. It drains our resources and they're wanting to help. Thank you. Let's make sure they get invited to the Criminal Justice Commission meeting when we when we deal with that issue, okay? Did you want these? Yeah, if you could hand them to the city attorney, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure that, that we call the the uh, organization. They are a, a recognized organization by the state, but there are a lot of other ways for people to get training in and you know, it just it seems to me the, the simpler... It's a far more complex problem than, than it seems on the surface. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be. It is. Mr. Mayor, there was one thing he shared with me. He was able to tell me about the investigative process, how they were able to find, with their, their, through their investigative process, a group of people. One man, actually, one credit card was trying to purchase 250 massage therapy li uh, licenses through the city, a local city ordinance. They were able to okay, cross-reference it. Let, let's wait for the Criminal Justice Commission. They're incredibly competent people. Okay. And, and let's see what they come up with, okay? I think they're wonderful to talk to, and they would know way more than me. Okay, I'd great. invite them. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Lyle Talbot. Good evening, Council, staff, and citizens. I'd like to get your attention, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> you always seem to have your head down when I speak, and you always show me from the back. Never use that camera. I'm trying to think of something nice to say to start with. You recommended that to me a couple of meetings back. So I've come up with something. The bird songs. Thank you for paying for the program. Who paid to have the installation on that boulevard, who paid 
to do all the wiring, who paid for the speakers, and uh, you might direct that to your public works director. And uh, the signage is not visible from the street, especially when the trees bloom. I have a suggestion. Let's trim the trees a little higher. And the bird songs, maybe we should install them at the 24-hour gym. Um, the mayor was bragging and gloating <coughs> over the census figures. I like your attention, sir. You gloating over the census figures, lording it over Jim Ledford, Palmdale mayor. Do you realize that in our head count, we have over 4,000 prisoners at the big house out there on 60th and I, and several thousand, Dave, and count on your census, that's how you beat them in the 2000 census, sir. But you weren't mayor then. Yeah, and you would count the juvenile boys out there too. The Palmdale uh, power plant awaits the, the uh, California Energy Commission's decision and uh, the AQMD meeting, I was going to discuss it, but it was canceled at the last minute last week. Don't know why that was. You've got my hand out. It appeared in the paper this week. And uh, you're not supposed to take action, but I've seen you do it repeatedly. And our city council over here, our, our attorney, he, he overlooks it. But I'm here to talk about... Uh, Cowards and lady liars that sit on that dais. You call me a liar. Did you try to contact me? You call me an invective, viperous speaker. The lights down and like it tonight. Because I don't like to see mine heading along with you two up there on the front page. You insulted my family. And most of them are dead. But I speak for the rest. And here's another badge of courage, the one that Mayor Sherman Block gave me Thank for 15 you. years of service. Thank you. And I have nothing to say. David Aber. Good evening. I want to start by also welcoming the new captain. I wish him the best up here. Um, the past two weeks, a lot of people have uh, inquired uh, about what happened that day in the courthouse in Van Nuys. And I wasn't there. I've read uh, two different reports with Councilman Smith and the incident there. So, you know, you're free to use as much of my time as you want to clarify the uh, situation so everybody knows what did happen that day. Having said that, uh, moving right along, um, be short tonight. Um, earlier this afternoon, I filed a $3 million claim against the city for the incident at the 24-hour fitness gym where the mayor attacked me and also the statements made on the Channel 7 News where he slandered, defamed me, and a character assassinated me, making false accusations. Uh, suggesting that I had been stalking him for over two and a half years, which is nothing but an absolute uh, preposterous, absurd statement. But uh, nevertheless, um, I don't appreciate my name being drugged through the mud like that, as well as some of the other accusations. So since uh, we're coming up on the sixth month period, which would have been the 28th, um, and obviously the mayor doesn't choose to apologize for his behavior that day, um, I'm left with no other choice than to file the claim against the city as well as the mayor. Um, I'll give the city attorney adequate time to respond um, as allowed by the uh, procedure. And at that point, I will bring counsel in and uh, we'll go forth and get to the bottom of the situation. Um, that about covers it. Um, I do want to... Uh, request that we adjourn the meeting in honor of Rabbi David Hoffman, who was uh, on your interfaith uh, council. Thank you very much.
Mr. Paul, would you come down and lighten our load, please? Don't talk about us being in the bathroom together. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor and Council, good evening. This evening, there was a lot of love in this room at the beginning, and uh, I, I still feel it. Um, we just have each other. There was a lot of coverage uh, of the disaster in Japan and the war in Libya recently, and uh, there was a psychologist on TV, and she was talking about how you tell children about things that are happening in the world when they're afraid, and uh, she gave some good advice. She said, first of all, you have to explain to them in a way they understand that bad things happen sometimes. The nuclear radiation in Japan, you explain to them that it's far enough away not really to impact us. But the most important thing is you have to give people, even the children, a way to deal with it. Even if it's going to the cabinet and getting a couple cans of food to donate, just being involved in the process is, is very therapeutic. And uh, I appreciate that. Uh, this has been dragging me down a little bit, problems in the world. And I was heartened to come here tonight and see all the love in this room. And I attended a couple of community events recently that also helped. Uh, the first was the press conference at the uh, Sheriff's Statement uh, Station welcoming the Captain Welcome Captain. Uh, that was a fun event. And, uh, of course, today at American Heroes Park, we opened it up and my boys were playing and, and on the equipment. It, it was just an absolutely uh, great event that helps build community, the, the downtown, the park, all of it's coming together. And these are the things that even if it's not a direct contribution, just feeling like you're part of the community, uh, fulfills that third part of just uh, having something to do, just belonging. Um, I love the park. I just have one little note about the park. From the senior center, I'd like to see some uh, clearly demarked crossing lanes, big bright yellow or a sign to help the seniors get across to the park. Uh, one at the corner of Jackman, maybe one down a little further. That would really help. And uh, other than that, thank you all very much. Uh, we just... There's such stressful times right now, all this stuff going on. But again, I just want to stress that we just we just have each other, and we have to love each other, and we have to find solutions instead of just picking problems. And that's what I'd like to see from everybody. So thank you and good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay, city manager. Any? Oh, we've already done that, haven't we? Okay. Before we go into closed session, does the council have any comments? Also, are there any reports about any agency? We're not going to hear about ABT. Uh, <clears throat> there's nothing reportable. It was all in closed session, so. Oh. All day was in closed session. Most of it. <laughs> all Five day. And a half hours. You hear that? You hear that, Mr. Wilson? All day was in closed session. Okay. Uh, we will now adjourn to a closed session of our own, which hopefully won't be more than 15 minutes. Council, the uh, council met in closed session uh, concerning a, a number of items. The uh, first was a conference with legal counsel under Government Code Section 54956.9A concerning the uh, Antelope Valley groundwater cases. They're all listed on the agenda um, and gave direction to uh, council concerning the handling of that, uh, that litigation. The also met in closed session under Government Code Section 54956.9A concerning Antelope Valley Allied Arts Association versus Lancaster um, and again um, gave direction to council concerning, uh, concerning that matter. Um, they also met in closed session uh, under 54956.9A concerning Miracle Star Women's Recovery uh, Community, Inc. versus City of Lancaster. G again, gave direction to council concerning the handling of uh, that litigation. 
And finally, with respect to the uh, matter that was added as an urgency item, um, the uh, council met in closed session under 54956.9A and uh, gave direction to council concerning uh, rejection of a settlement offer in that matter. Thank you. In regards to the Allied Arts case, you might find it interesting what the judge said at a re the, he struck their complaint essentially and told them to refile another one, right? Yes. But in saying to do that, in telling them to do that, the court said, the court agrees with defendants that plaintiff's 70-page first amended complaint is a muddled mess that is so confusing, contradictory, and uncertain that defendants cannot reasonably be expected to respond to it. That's the type of lawsuits that we're continually being confronted with in this city, which leads me to another lawsuit, uh, and that is the Mongols. The Mongols would like $2 million from us and an apology from Mr. Paris on behalf of the city of Lancaster and its city council, with him stating that the Mongol Nation Motorcycle Club, Inc., is allowed to come to the city of Lancaster, conduct its business, and will not be harassed, threatened, or intimidated as long as each member of the club remains law-abiding, peaceful citizens while in the city. As for an apology, that's absurd. That will never happen. As for being welcome in the city of Lancaster, the Mongol nation will never be welcome in the city of Lancaster. We view them as a threat to the public safety. They are never going to be invited to do anything in this city other than leave. Now, as far as them being intimidated and harassed by law enforcement, it is not within my power to direct that. But if I could, I certainly would. Uh, and I guess we'll deal with Mr. Aber's lawsuit on another day. Anything else? By the way, Mr. Aber's lawsuit was not discussed in closed session. That's correct. That's why I said Just we'll deal with it on another that. day. Uh, he's about as likely to get an apology as the Mongol nation is. Now, where's my agenda? Thank you. Earlier today, we signed a, uh, a certificate of adjournment on behalf of Rabbi David Hoffman. We are adjourning the meeting in memory of Rabbi David Hoffman. Rabbi David Hoffman was courageous at a time of profound political change in South Africa. He helped guide the insular South African Jewish community through the end of apartheid and the new democratic era, and with all its hopes and challenges. He reached out to other religious leaders through interfaith events and dialogues to create a real constituency for peace, negotiation, and tolerance. The city of Lancaster was blessed to have Rabbi Hoffman become a citizen of the city of Lancaster and help us through our own times of struggle in regards to delicate political issues. He was always a voice of reason, a voice of hope, and a voice of negotiation. We will sorely miss him. We are adjourned until Tuesday, April 12th, 2011 at 5 p.m. Carol, my day is done. I am coming home.